Hello, my name is Francie Schwartz. I'm going to be the officiant at this afternoon's ceremony. I'm a cousin of the groom, and I'm so excited to be with you all. I've been asked by Jamie and by Andrew, please to take your seats for the entire ceremony and not to go into the aisle and have pictures taken. That is all taken care of. Thank you.
is my great honor and privilege to welcome you all to Jamie and Andrew's wedding. This will be an afternoon full of tradition and innovation, hope and joy, and of course, love. Along the way, I'll explain both the old and the new rituals and wedding traditions that Jamie and Andrew have chosen. For example, we are standing under a chuppah, a wedding canopy, open on all sides to show the gracious hospitality of our hosts. The ceremony of hakafa, or encircling, that you've just witnessed is attributed to the biblical book of Jeremiah, which says that a woman shall go around a man. That's tradition. <laughs> and you, of course, saw that while Jamie did circle Andrew three times, uh, followed by three circles by Andrew of Jamie, concluding with one circle that both bride and groom share. That's innovation. They made a total of seven circles, signifying the creation of the world in seven days the seven blessings to be recited toward the end of the wedding ceremony, and the fact that marriage is indeed a seven day a week act of creation. So let me start with a traditional series of welcome blessings. Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Welcome in the name of Adonai. Baruch hukem mebeit Adonai. Welcome in this house of Adonai. Once the guests have been welcome, it's tradition to ask God to bless this wedding. Mi adir al hakol, mi baruch al hakol, mi gadol al hakol, yevarech et hakatan, ve'et hakala. Splendor is upon everything. Blessing is upon everything. Who is full of this abundance? Bless these loving companions. There is a saying, without wine, there is no blessing. Kedush is how Jews sanctify virtual, virtually all Jewish holidays and personal observances and in a wedding, it is repeated twice. Once now, and uh, the second time, the first of the seven blessings a bit later. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Borei Pri Hagafen. Holy One of Blessing, your presence fills creation, forming the fruit of the vine. For many hundreds of years, two ceremonies comprised a Jewish marriage ceremony, and the first, Erosin, or betrothal, took place a full year before the chuppah. Now, we combine both betrothal and marriage in the same day, uh, and still keep the following blessing to God. You are holy, Adonai, and your presence permeates the universe. Through your commandments, we share your holiness. You teach us to rejoice with the bride and groom, to celebrate their consecration to each other, to witness their vows to each other here beneath the bridal canopy. You are holy Adonai, and you sanctify the union of your children beneath the canopy. And now the bride and groom takes a sip of wine. My hair got in it. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Mm -hmm. Good one. The groom's giving and the bride's acceptance of a ring is the legal enactment of a Jewish wedding 
and thus the central act of the wedding ceremony. This formula, called the Hare At, contains 32 letters in Hebrew, and the number 32 is written with the letters Lamed, which means 30, and Vet, which means two. Together, they spell the word heart, or leave. So the groom thus gives his heart to his bride as he recites these words. Andrew, please take the ring and place it on Jamie's ring finger. And repeat after me, first in Hebrew and then in English. Hare at Mikudeshet Li Mikudeshet Li Maat Zu Kadat Moshe Yisrael Moshe Yisrael By this ring By this ring you are consecrated to me You are consecrated to me as my wife as my wife in accordance with the traditions in accordance with the traditions of Moses and Israel of Moses and Israel though the bride is not legally required to say or do anything <laughs> when she gives the ring to her groom this is not the way Jamie wants to proceed <laughs> and nobody here is surprised <laughs> therefore Please take the ring that you have purchased for Andrew and placing it on his ring finger, say the following in both Hebrew and English. Hare Ata. Hare Ata. Mikudash Li. Mikudash Li. Bitu Betet Zu. Zu. Kadat. Kadat. Moshe Yisrael. Moshe Yisrael. By this ring, by this ring, you are concentrate consecrated to me. You are consecrated to me as my husband. As my husband, in accordance with the traditions of Moses and Israel. According to the traditions of Moses and Israel, this ring completes the betrothal part of the wedding. <laughs> now, way way back in the day. The father of the bride got together with the father of the groom and devised a written legal contract called the Ketubah, which spells out the physical commodities that both the bride and the groom brought to the marriage. The Ketubah also listed in detail what the bride was entitled to. So should for whatever reason the marriage dissolve, uh, the bride will know what exactly she is entitled to. Though this <laughs> might seem a little bit harsh by today's standards, 2,000 years ago, this afforded the woman almost unheard of financial protection and security. <laughs> but since we no longer to need ex to know exactly how many cows and goats seal this particular <laughs> marriage contract. A recent Jewish innovation has resurrected the ketubah. So it now spells out the sacred traits the beloveds will strive to bring to their marriage in the days, weeks, and years to come. And as you can probably see, this beautiful wedding ketubah, which is right to my right, has been chosen by Jamie and Andrew. At their behest, I'm honored to share it with you, our wedding community. And these are the words chosen by Andrew and Jamie. As we embark on life's journey, we promise to love, cherish, encourage, and inspire one another. Our hearts fuse together, creating a unique bond with friendship and compassion at its core. Through this union, we vow to value and support each other, 
always striving to show sensitivity to each other's needs. We shall nurture one another emotionally, spiritually, and intellectually, always mindful of our respective qualities and strengths. May we continue to grow together, maintaining the courage and determination to pursue our desired paths. We promise to celebrate life's joys with grace and overcome life's adversities with tenacity. May we maintain the intimacy that fosters trust, honesty, and communication. As life partners, we shall strive to build a home committed to our Jewish heritage, a home emanating love, peace, tolerance, and charity. Through each other's eyes, we see the world anew. May we be better together. All this is valid and binding. Dearest Jamie, dearest Andrew, yes, this is the day you've dreamed about, thought about, and spent so much time planning for. It's here, your perfect day, surrounded by your family and friends who share your joy and happiness as you become husband and wife. You are truly each other's beloveds. As a well-known passage from the ancient biblical book of the Song of Songs says, Ani Lidodi, Vidodi Li. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. But what does this really mean in 2022? To be belovedly tied together, yet still be individuals in your own right. We might get an idea, an idea from what we witnessed just a few minutes ago, as Jamie and Andrew participated in Hakafa encircling the hoopah, first individually and then together. And I hope that you will permit me to make some observations from events in your own lives and then together that illustrate who each of you are and what each of you bring to your life together. Jamie, were I to say and I promise not to sing it. The itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot <laughs> bikini. <laughs> what memories does this song hold for you? All those years of practice, dedication to synchronized swimming, culminating in your coming in sixth in the nationals competition, along with your teammates performing to that itsy bitsy teeny weeny thing. <laughs> uh, critical to your success was your ability to work as an individual part of the team, <coughs> understanding the meaning of sustained commitment, relationship, and partnership. Traits that will surely underscore your life with Andrew. By the way, Kudos to the dedication and endurance of your mom and dad <laughs> for schlepping you to endless practices and meets. And remember, Jamie, in your senior year of college, when you told your parents that what you really wanted to do in your life was teach and dedicate yourself to the field of education rather than a career in your dedicated major finance. That meant earning additional university credits to achieve your newly chosen pursuit, ultimately very successful, as witnessed by your recent appointment as assist assistant principal at your school. It took risk and determination to understand who you were and who you wanted to be character traits that will serve you well in your marriage. Andrew, I've known you since you've been born. 
It's been grand watching you grow and mature to becoming the fast, uh, fantastic person you are today. In college, your path mirrored that of Jamie, at first studying journalism, but then deciding you wanted to give teaching a chance, pursuing a career similar to that of your father. You secured a spot in Teach for America, committing to teaching mostly underprivileged kids in low-income environments. The fact that you taught first drew you, you and Jamie together, both focusing on your mutual love for shaping young people's lives. As you told me, sometimes I love teaching and sometimes I hated it, <laughs> but you stuck it through learning critical life lessons like honor, fulfillment, and commitment that will come in handy in your life together with Jamie. Your teaching led you into the computer world, fashioning educational tools that teachers could use to help their students and then new opportunities that gave you the ability to learn and advance in your field. So the ability to trade a sure thing for the greater risk of change and compromise will see you well in the years and decades to come. Now, as a software developer for Teachers Hate Teachers, you are truly leading the way in paying it forward in education. So Jamie and Andrew, from lives apart that in some ways paralleled each other to standing here today, encircling each other, then making your final circle as one, hand in hand, sharing your strength and forging ahead as forever Frito. <laughs> Over the past several weeks, it's been a joy to Zoom with you to discuss details about your wedding today and to see you calmly sitting on the sofa in Hoboken, New Jersey, going over each point and making your decisions together. Your calm deliberations and ultimate conclusions speak volumes about your love and comfort level and the manner in which you will surely grow together from strength to strength. For you both, dearest Jamie and dearest Andrew, I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. There is a beautiful Shabbat prayer from the book of Proverbs said by the man of the house to his wife in front of the entire family right before the Friday night meal begins. The prayer takes its name, Eshet Chayel Min Yitzah, what a rare find is a capable wife, from its first line. Since we are just a few hours away from the Shabbat, Jamie and Andrew have decided to read updated versions of this prayer to each other underneath the chuppah. A good wife, who can find her? She's worth far more than rubies. She brings good and not harm. All the days of her life, she girds herself with strength and finds her trades profitable. Wise counsel is on her tongue and her home never suffers for warmth. She stretches her hands to the poor, reaches her arms to the needy. All her friends praise her, her family blesses her. She is known at the gates as she sits with the elders. Dignity, honor are her garb. She smiles at the future. A good man, who can find him? 
He is worth far more than rubies. All who trust in him never lack in gain. He shares the household duties and sets a good example. He seeks a satisfying job and braces his arms for work. He opens his mouth with wisdom. He speaks with love and kindness. His justice brings him praises. He raises the poor, lowers the haughty. These two indeed do worthily. True leaders in Zion, give them their true credit. Let their work praise them at the gates. <clears throat> and now, Andrew and Jamie, you will recite your vows to each other. I guess I'll go first. Yes, I don't know. Who has your vows? Okay. <laughs> so it's a good time, because yeah. I'll go first. There's a line in our first dance song that really resonates with me. The line reads, you were the obvious one. I find this line so powerful because I see it as both a declaration and a promise of everything I feel for you. I remember going home from our first date and telling my roommate that felt different. I don't think I was able to express why at the time, but now I'm going to attempt it. <laughs> With you, everything feels different because I admire everything you do and everything you are. I'm inspired by your tenacity, your selflessness, your warmth, and your silliness. I'm in awe of how strong you are and how when you commit to something, you give your full self to it. You've given your full self to our love and our relationship, and the result is something that is so obviously perfect. I know right now you want to yell out, perfect is a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so because of this, every step of the way in our relationship has been some of the easiest choices I've ever had to make. It felt obvious when we spent five years, uh, not five years, five hours, <laughs> it'd be a long drive, uh, five hours driving in the Utah desert with each other as our only company. It felt obvious when I said I loved you for the first time in the back of a karaoke bar. <laughs> It felt obvious when you asked me to move in with you after dating less than a year. And it felt obvious when I gave you that ring on your finger. So when I see everything that we are together, choosing to spend the rest of my life with you is the most obvious decision I've ever had to make in my life. But obvious doesn't just happen. Obvious happens because we both work on it. We're open in our communication, both when it's easy and when it's hard, especially when it's hard. We share our hopes and dreams with each other. When we're on the edge, we pull each other back to center. We make it clear how we feel about each other every single day. So you are the obvious one is also a promise. It's a promise to always be open with you. It's a promise to be your biggest cheerleader and your closest confidant. It's a promise to grow and to learn with you. It's a promise to be your rock. But most of all, it's a promise to work every day to earn that feeling that everything is obvious. On April 2nd, 2019, I messaged this cute boy on Hinge, asking him about his teaching experience. When we finally met up in person, about a month later, the immediate comfort was obvious. It felt like I had known him forever, and I didn't want the date to end. We spent the evening bonding over stories of our teaching days, our love for pop punk music, and our love for games, talking, and laughing until final call. Whether I realized it or not, that day, I had found my perfect partner. Later, I would realize that this cute boy from Hinge would become my best friend, my better half, my person. Andrew, I've loved you for over three years now. Today, I become your wife, and I get the privilege of loving you for all the years to come. Today, we make official what I have known for quite some time that you are my forever. I used to be skeptical of the cliche, when you know, you know. That was before I knew. 
Over the last few years, a variety of people have asked us, how did we know that this was the one? Both of us immediately responded with the same answer. This was the relationship that felt easy and comfortable from the start. From playing games at Dave and Buster's in Clinton Hall, to hiking at Breakneck Ridge where you asked me to be your girlfriend, to when you came to visit me in Utah, our relationship felt effortless. You were the first relationship I had where I was able to be completely open and share my hopes, dreams, fears. And I knew. When you came to visit me in Utah, despite never having traveled together, the five hour car rides felt like we were seasoned traveling companions. It was on this trip while hiking in Zion that we both realized we loved each other. I will never forget the night shortly afterwards that where you told me you loved me during karaoke. <laughs> I remember realizing how quickly I fell in love with you and the shocking realization that you felt the same way. So much so that we both needed to reconfirm it the next morning <laughs> to ensure it really happened. Falling in love with you just felt natural. I had zero doubts in my mind that I wanted to spend as much time with you as possible. I continue falling more and more in love with you each day. Since the day I met you, you have been my biggest supporter, my thought partner, and my favorite shoulder to cry on. You are the first person with whom I want to share your news with, whether it be good or bad. You have been and always will be my sounding board and the mirror that truly sees all sides of me. You help me navigate any obstacle that comes my way and you make me want to be a better person. You are my greatest decision, the joy of my life. You are my bravest adventure and my safest place. Looking towards our future, I vow to say yes to all that life has to offer. Yes to trying new things, meeting new people, and hiking up mountains hand in hand. I vow to protect your heart and always put your needs above my own. I vow to never stop dating you. As your wife, I will never stop discovering ways to show you how much I love you, such as watching all of the Packers and you games. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for taking care of my heart. Thank you for believing in us. I love you bravely and boldly forever. You are the only thing I've ever been truly certain of. I'll forever be indebted to Hinge and the perfect timing for bringing me you, the love of my life, exactly when I was ready to love you. I could not be more ready for a brand new path on our great adventure. I love you so much. Amen. 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 We've almost reached the conclusion of Jamie and Andrew's wedding ceremony. Legally, only two witnesses must be present to make a valid marriage, as we just discovered a few minutes ago. But you need 10 Jews, a minion, to recite the seven blessings. These invoke some of the great themes of Judaism, including creation, peoplehood, Jerusalem, and redemption. They make every wedding the fulcrum of time, the center point between creation and redemption, between the first days and the end of days. I will read each traditional blessing in English, and one of Andrew and Jamie's siblings will respond with a contemporary reading. Blessed are you, the boundless one, our God, sovereign of all worlds, who creates the fruit of the vine. Our goal should be to live life in radical amazement to get up in the morning and look at the world in a way that takes nothing for granted. Everything is phenomenal. Everything is incredible. Never treat life casually. To be spiritual is to be amazed. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel. Blessed are you, source of life, our God, sovereign of all worlds, whose whole creation testifies to your glorious presence. Love 
Blessed are you, kind one, our God, sovereign of all worlds, who fashions human beings. Listen, to live is to be marked, to live is to change, to acquire the words of a story, and that is the only celebration we mortals really know. Farmer King Saul. Blessed are you, imageless our God, sovereign of worlds, who has fashioned human beings in your image, patterning them in your likeness, and preparing them to share in the chain of life. Blessed are you, the welcoming one, who fashions human beings. Love does not consist of gazing at each other, but in looking outward together in the same direction, Anton the same May Zion, the heart of our people, rejoice in the ingatherings of all her children and all who join together in loving relationships. Blessed are you, the welcoming one, who makes Zion rejoice with her children. In the flush of love's light, we dare to be brave. Suddenly we see that love costs all we are and will ever be. Yet it's only love which sets us free. Maya Angelou. <laughs> Make joyful these loving companions, O oh God, even as you once in the Garden of Eden made joyful your first couple. Blessed are you, Delight, who makes joyful these loving companions. Let the vow of this day keep itself wildly and holy, spoken and silent, surprise you inside your ears, sleeping and waking unfold itself inside your eyes. Let its fierceness and tenderness hold you. Let its vastness be undisguised in all your days. Blessed are you, faithful one, our God, sovereign of all worlds, who has created gladness and joy, loving partners, glee, song, mirth, and exaltation, harmony, and love and peace and companionship. Soon, O Eternal, our God, may there be heard in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem the voice of joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of loving partners from the chuppah, and from celebrations, festive songs of young friends. Blessed are you, joyful one, who brings loving companions together to rejoice in each other. <laughs> Blessed be joy and gladness, lover and beloved, mirth, glad song, pleasure, delight, love, celebration, friendship, peace, and companionship. Let us soon hear in the streets of the cities and the paths of the fields the sound of joy and the sound of gladness the voice of the lover and the voice of the beloved, the cheers of the couple from their canopy and of the youths from their song-filled feet. Blessed is the gladness of the couple rejoicing together. Rendita Zaymon. Thank you so much. As the Honorable Sherry Cantor, Mayor of West Hartford, makes her way up to the chuppah, uh, I'm going to ask the wedding community to practice something that is very important because without your participation, <laughs> the wedding is just not going to continue in the beautiful way it has begun. Glass. As soon as Andrew breaks the glass, all of you are going to say, Mazel Tov. <laughs> so let's hear it. Mazel Tov. You know, I don't know about that. Oh, okay. Should we, no, it wasn't should good. we give Not him good. another chance? Okay. One, two, three. Muzzle Oh, that was Yay. much better. That was much better. Yeah. Was, was that okay? That was much okay. better. Yeah, 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 that was very good. Okay. So we stomp, then we kiss. Mm -hmm. You have to take this off. <laughs> this is just in preparation. <laughs> Wait till she said. Yeah. Don't go. Don't do anything yet. <laughs> no pressure. Here we go. On the 
on the sixth day of the week, the first day of the month of Av in the year 5782, corresponding to the 29th day of July in the year 2022 here in Stonington, Connecticut, United States of America, in the presence of beloved family and friends, the beloveds Andrew Thomas Gianfrido, a son of Thomas and Holly, and Jamie Lynn Ross, daughter of Howard and Rhonda, enter into the covenant of marriage. You are promising to honor, and oh, please join hands. <laughs> you are promising to honor, love, and support each other for the rest of your lives. Cherish each other, cherish every moment. By the authority vested in me by the laws of the state of Connecticut, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Mom!